Hi, this is Coach Dan with OTZ Sports, and here's a technical breakdown of how I teach the volley. First, start with your arm ahead of you and rack it at 90 degrees. Second, make sure you have a grip, usually the continental, that allows you to hit the ball off of both sides without changing the grip. There is no time to change the grip. Yes, the backhand is awkward, but you get used to it. How do we get used to it? You can work on the wrist, moving it side to side. Exercise the wrist with and without the racket in your hand. But a strong volley means you have to build up the wrist muscles. Volley drill number one. Okay, now let's do a drill just using your wrist in order to practice meeting the ball with a straight arm in front of you. Have a partner throw you three balls. You start on the service line and move forward to meet each, the ball each time. Get to the net by the third ball. Don't move your arm to the side or you won't have the power to get the ball over. Make sure you feel the ball in front of the body as far as possible. We are trying to avoid the temptation to swing at the ball. When you swing, you lose control, accuracy, and power. Here is what good volley preparation looks like from the side. Again, work on meeting the ball at arm's length in front of you. It is important to practice this without the ball because when the ball comes, you will want to swing. We haven't yet talked about balance, which is an important concept. Every shot in tennis needs balance. When I make my move towards the net, I want to hop and land on both feet, wait on the toes. I do this just as my opponent is about to hit the ball. So as soon as I can judge the direction of his shot, I can push off my toes to vector towards the ball. I always want to move forward so I get maximum power on the volley. At the same time, I see where the ball is going. My wrist opens to either the forehand or the backhand side. I want to keep my feet moving so I remain balanced and I'm not falling over during the shot. Here's a slow motion breakdown. Now I can hear you saying, Coach Dan, you are swinging at the ball. Yes, you can see me moving the racket to meet the ball. This is true. And this is the whole secret to my method of teaching the volley. If I told you to punch or swing at the ball from the beginning, you would end up meeting the ball to the side or even behind you most of the time. And this makes volleying difficult. It would be too much swing. But if I tell you to block the ball out in front of you with a straight arm, you will end up swinging a little, but meeting the ball out in front consistently. That is our goal, and it all comes from making sure that the arm is in front of you. We want to be coming into the net like a wall closing in on, our, on the opponents. Check out Josh coming in with a pane of windshield glass. All he has to do is meet the ball and use the opponent's power against him, directing the ball by angling the glass. The racket with your straight arm in front is as solid is as, as solid as a wall. Volley drill number two. This is pretty much the same drill as the first, only you have your racket in your hand. Three balls and then come into net. Start at the service line and make sure you can touch your net the net with your racket after the third volley. If you can't, you aren't moving forward enough. The next part of this lesson is about when to come to net. You want to come to net when your opponent is at a disadvantage and will give you a weaker shot. My favorite play is to slice the ball to the opponent's backhand, make him run a few steps, come in and volley the ball to the other side of the court.
I slice the ball to keep it low and make the return more difficult. Find the opponent's weakness and come into net. Now don't overuse this tactic because the opponent will probably start to anticipate your coming to net and make it more difficult for you to volley. Keep the element of surprise. The more I can make my opponent run, the less balance he has for a good passing shot. Make a mental note to see what the opponent does with his or her passing shot. Do they consistently go down the line or cross court? Do they instinctively hit the lob? The shot they hit when under pressure is usually the one they feel the most comfortable with. Knowing this, I try and anticipate towards the end of the match where the opponent will go with the passing shot and take a step to that direction. Don't let the opponent know that you are anticipating. Make your move just before they meet the ball when their eyes are focused on the shot and not on you. Just so you know, the most effective passing shot is the cross-court shot. It makes the net rusher move the most when attempting to volley. If the opponent starts passing you at will, rethink your strategy of coming to the net and on which shot, but make the opponent hit at least two great winners on the first two shots before you make that decision. Let's talk about the fear of coming to net. I understand. It seems like a suicide mission sometimes. Here are the facts. One, if you come to net, you're taking control of the point. And two, if you close in all the way to the net, you have the angles to finish off the point. Yes, but you're still afraid. Okay, ask yourself why. Do you need to work on your approach shot? So work on it. Are you trying to hedge your bets by staying in the middle of the court? Sorry, that won't work. I once had a doubles partner who is now a famous tennis coach that said to me, Hey, I'm kind of short, and why should I come to net when they can just lob over me? Here is my answer. Don't give your opponent credit on a shot they haven't yet hit. If I've come to net twice in a row and the opponent lobs a perfect ball over me each time, I will adjust my tactics, but not until I see they can hit that shot under pressure. Another fear is standing at the net in doubles and being afraid to be aggressive to poach the volley. What if I miss? Here's my answer. If you are aggressive and miss the shot, at least the opponent knows that you might try it again, so you're forcing them to try and hit the perfect return. The added pressure on them causes mistakes on their return, so you will reap the rewards even if you miss. Don't be a statue at the net. If you are a statue and don't move, the opponents know that they don't have to worry about you on the serve return. Take a few chances at first within your comfort zone. Try to volley the balls in your area and be aggressive. Sometimes I will fake a couple of quick steps to the middle of the court just before the stroke is hit. I want the opponents to worry that I might make a move on each shot. Coach Dan says, Always remember to move your feet. When do you stop moving forward when it comes to the volley? Never. When you're starting to get nervous, just keep moving forward and move your feet to refocus your mind. When you're feeling intimidated by the opponent's passing shots or lobs, keep moving forward and move your feet. You've got nothing to lose. And when your attention is starting to drift, wake up by moving forward.
Remember, even the pros make mistakes on the volley and lose points when they come to net. Sometimes they successfully convert only 50% of their net points in a victory. But they have put their opponents under pressure, which yields more points in the end. So my answer to feeling afraid is to always feel you are moving forward, closing in on the net. If you don't, you aren't a volleyer. You're just a big target at the net. You might as well just draw the circles and bullseye on your chest because you don't want to give your opponents a target to hit at the net. They should fear you. Here are three volley drills designed to help you with your volley skills. Drill number one, the volley against the wall. Here is a drill that forces you to move forward on the volley. I like this drill because all you need is a wall. First, you hit a forehand or backhand against the wall and start to move in with the racket out in front of you after that first shot. Take the second ball in the air, racket still out in front, and keep moving to the wall, not hitting the ball too hard, but pushing forward and keeping the racket well in front of you. After the fourth shot, try and catch the ball against the wall with your racket. You can only do this if the racket is in front of the body. If you can do this drill well, you have the concept of meeting the ball in front of the body, control of the ball, and moving forward. Here's volley drill number two. The volley drill with both partners coming to net. This drill is with a partner and on the court. Both of you start on the service line and you're playing on only one half of the court lengthwise. So make an imaginary line from the center line to the notch on the baseline on both sides. Each player alternates serves, and the only rule is you have to reach the other player in the air with the first shot. Both players try to storm the net with the rackets up at the same time, and usually the more aggressive one will win the point, if you meet the ball out in front with good preparation. You can play this game up to 10 points. This is a good drill for moving in, being aggressive, and working on your volley reactions. You can also do this drill diagonally, and that way you get to work on your angled volleys. This is a great drill to practice with your doubles partner. Just, in re just like in real match points, try to volley to your opponent's feet. If you can hit down to their feet, they have to volley up to you, and it is easier for you to put the ball away. This drill duplicates the type of intense volley points in serious tennis matches, so it is a good drill to bolster your confidence at the net. Volley drill number three. Three volleys and a smash drill. With a partner on the baseline holding four balls, have him or her hit you three balls, one after another, at you while you come into the net. The fourth ball should be a lob, and you hit the smash. The faster the pace of the balls off your opponent's racket, the better it will test your reactions and preparedness. Get all the way in by that third volley so you can almost touch the net. By the way, 
if you want to make these drills, these last two drills, even more advanced, start on the baseline and try to get to net by the third volley. Remember, the goal is to work on your footwork, your racket preparation, your movement forward, and your reactions. One thing you will find as you move into the net aggressively is the sharpening of your reflexes as you push yourself forward. Moving forward with the racket up makes you focus totally on the ball and react to the direction of the ball off the opponent's racket. Focusing on the ball helps to put you in the zone at the net. Here are a few more tips. Volley tactics. Don't try to hit the lines with the volley. Just make sure the other person has a lot of ground to cover to get to the ball. If you put too much pressure on your shot, you will end up hitting the ball out. Set yourself up for the easy winner. Surprisingly, the best volley is the one that challenges your opponent to move to the ball or even at their feet if you are both close to the net. Don't feel you have to hit the winner. The volley is not a shot about power. It is about blocking the ball and using the opponent's power against them. If you are generating power, it makes you want to swing at the ball. And you know I don't want you to swing at the ball. The approach shot. When you come into the net on an approach shot, you don't have to hit the approach shot too aggressively. Just make sure the opponent moves enough steps so he or she is off balance. By the time you get right on top of the net, then you want to angle the ball off for the winner. But make this shot the third one in the sequence. The approach is the first. The first volley is meant to get the opponent on the run. That's the second shot. And any volley after that is to put away. If you hit the volley right back to the other guy, you will have to pay the price. Serve and volley. Keeping the volley instruction in mind, how do we serve and volley? You hit the serve and in the transition get the racket up high quickly before the opponent strikes the ball to be ready for the volley on the way to the net. Rack it up first, then bring your feet together, wait on the toes ready to go to either side and push forward to the ball. Hit the volley to the other side of the court but don't get into a pattern of coming in on every ball that the opponent can start to detect. Always try to keep the opponent off balance. Low volley? No problem. Keep the racket straight in front of you and bend your knees to get to the low ball. Keep the racket high with the racket head always above the wrist and bend the knees. You're going to have to angle the racket up a little bit so it goes over the clears the net. Don't start dipping your racket below the wrist. It is much easier to lower the racket to volley the ball than it is to raise the racket which always requires more swing. The moment you start moving your arm around the ball is going to get behind your power zone so keep the racket high. Since the low, vo uh, the low volley is not a put away type of shot Keep that ball deep and far away from the opponent. This can also be an opportunity for a drop shot volley where you let the wrist absorb some of the shock of the ball and deftly angle the ball over the net. Work on that drop volley. It can be a devastating shot for you. I realize that this method of teaching the volley is a little extreme with no swing and the backhand at an awkward angle for the wrist. But this will allow you to add the volley to your shot arsenal right away with the minimum of trial and error. That is why you should practice this shot without the racket in your spare time while walking around. Two things will then happen. You practice seeing the ball on your racket in front of you and you will build up your wrist muscles. 
Let's recap what we have learned. One, preparation for the volley with racket out in front and weight on the toes, waiting to spring forward. Two, as soon as you see the direction of the ball off the opponent's racket, you open the wrist to the forehand or backhand side and vector toward the ball. If you meet the ball with the straight arm in front of you with minimum swing, you are as solid as a wall. Three, the mentality. Don't be afraid to move in. Challenge yourself to get to the ball before it comes to you. Don't go for the lines or make this a power shot. Use the opponent's power against him or her to block the shot and make them run after the ball.